Hi Cancer, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your January 2020 full moon reading. And this is such a profoundly powerful full moon for you, because not only is this full moon on the 10th of January the first full moon of the decade, but it is a full moon eclipse, so the energy is amplified, which is amazing, but the full moon also falls in your sign of Cancer. So the energy for you is going to be very intense and very, very beautiful. This is just one of the most exquisite full moons and just a beautiful way to start a decade. So let's dive right into the cards. Now, Cancer, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, and I will get to everything that I have laid out here. And yeah, let's get started. So I'm going to be using, I have your spirit animal cards up for the month, and I'm going to be using this at the very end. I'm going to be drawing one card to denote what spirit is saying from your spirit animal cards. So I'm just moving that to the side. And I'm going to be layering on top of the tarot at the end, the moonology oracle cards and the queen of the moon oracle cards to really have the moon be speaking for you herself or Luna speaking for you herself. And that's one of the things with this full moon. It is so profoundly connected to the divine feminine that it is absolutely exquisite. And you, Cancer, are divinely connected to the divine feminine. And so the energy around you for healing, for moving forward, for, you know, a sense of belonging and becoming is just, it's, it's simply profound. So let's get started here, Cancer, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, and see what spirit has to say. How will January 2020's full moon affect, affect Cancer? How will January's 2020 full moon 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 affect cancer? Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. Fantastic. All right. So that's where the cards fell. That's where spirit wants me to stop. At the center of everything, Cancer, is the tower card. Don't be afraid. This is actually a really good sign. You are crowned by the star card. So not only does the full moon have tremendous impact on you, but the new moon is in Aquarius. So that is also really lighting your path. And the new moon is on January 24th. And then we have the Eight of Wands, the Hanged Man, the Lovers, which is a Gemini energy, a time frame of, what is the time frame? May 21st, there we go, to June 20th. The Seven of Wands, and the King of Swords. This is amplifying that, also that Aquarius energy right here, shedding through Gemini and Aquarius energy here because they are both represented by the swords in the minor arcana as well as Libra. Then we have the page of cups, which is you. You're shining through as a learner, as a seeker, as a page. And then we have the seven of swords. The repeat on the, of the number seven is saying here that honesty is going to be really, really valued. Things being on the up and up is going to be very good. Anything that you try to say that might be an untruth or trying to pull the wool over somebody's eyes, it won't go over well. And not that you would, but just saying from spirit what the number seven is saying. And also there is a sense here of, yeah, of nobody being able to pull the wool over your eyes. And you're really going to not take well to that. And then we have the Queen of Wands, a fire sign energy, an Aries, a Leo, a Sagittarius, passion really coming in and amplifying the love that is around you. Okay. So let's begin. Now, actually, let me move these just for later to a better spot. Okay. So let's begin talking about this full moon because it's rather exciting. So here we start with the full moon itself. We have with the queen of the moon representing power and the moonology cards say surrender to the divine. So power, you are embracing power and you are surrendering to the divine during this full moon. And it's really a surrender to the divine feminine that is moving you forward. There is a 
sacredness to this moon, especially for you, Cancer, in the sense of growth, of rebirth of self. There are also going to be forgotten memories that surface during this time, and you're going to be calling on kind of a higher power to to lay the whispers into truth, meaning that there's going to be a way that you see things, a sense of, you know, do I do this or do I do that? And as the whispers fall into truth, you're going to find that you move forward much more steadfastly. There's also a very strong connection here to the feminine aspect of life, to the more, it's not more gentle because, you know, of course, feminines can also, a feminine aspect can also be very fierce, but there is a sense of the growing, of the wisdom, of showing showing a bounty and belonging and feeling your roots, feeling the way that you, you grow from the soil. And this is going to be a highly beneficial time for you. This is going to be a highly productive time for you. Oh, goodness. <laughs> of course, they both fall. fall. So here, a calling on the divine feminine during this time. Now, whether you believe in the divine feminine or not, whether you see this as a connection to the earth, that is completely up to you and for your own personal pe preference. But I do see here a sense of a blooming forward, of having, you know, kind of, it's, it's forgotten truths revealed. And this is going to be part of those forgotten memories. So whether you believe in past lives or not, there's a strong connection, especially to the female side of your past lives and also a female side of, of your existence here on this earthly plane in the here and now. You're going to be getting insights, understanding, and they're going to come through your dreams or through just kind of when your mind is wandering through the voice of someone very beloved who has passed on or who is just very beloved to you. And it's going to be a feminine voice, right? And this moon is a, a wolf moon. So you are hungry for what this moon has to, is bringing and has and is providing to you. And there's a sense here of personal issues reaching resolution. So there are personal things that are being resolved and there's a hunger for that resolution. There's a hunger for deeper knowledge, deeper understanding, a deeper truth to yourself that comes through embracing peace and harmony and bounty of soul. And as you embrace this bounty of soul, the... Goodness, I didn't want everything to fall again. Okay, there is a sense here with the full moon that conclusions are within reach, that you are really seeing kind of the the way things connect. I'm really seeing you see the golden thread of things, the way spirit brings this connection into your life. And I'm really focusing right here. My eye just keeps on being drawn to the golden light that is coming from her in this, in this bloom. I kind of see this as a very dark calla lily coming forward, you know, kind of blooming you into existence and you walking forward into it. There's golden threads that are binding you. There are silver threads that are around you during this time. It's kind of like the, the moon's light is wrapping around you, moving you forward and having you see things in a way that is quite different than you would have before. And that's what I'm seeing from the lovers and the star card here. And then at Okay, so we move into the void of course during the full moon at 6.58 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm going to link the void of courses from this, from this full moon all the way to the full moon on February, on February 9th, 2020. So at this time, do not make any big decisions. I would say between 6.50 and 7.15, I would really give it, if you want to be really safe, just a whole hour block. But do not make any big decisions at this time because you are going to find that what you think is going to happen or any big plans during this time, what you think is going to happen isn't going to be the way things planned out. So this says nothing will come of this situation. It's not that nothing will come of the situation. It's that nothing you expect will come of the situation. So here, if you need to make a really big plan or you need to do something that's really important, really avoid the 6.58 p.m. Eastern Standard Time time, all right? And again, calculate that to wherever you are in the world, but that is what Spirit is saying. And again, I will have these all linked in the description box below all the times because there is a sense here of the void, of course, because the power of this moon is so powerful for you, the void, of course, is going to be more powerful than usual. So it's going to kind of trip you up. You might find that you kind of, it's actually... 
oh, that's funny. It's actually going to trip some of you cancers up. You might find that you stumble. You might find that you drop things at this time a little bit more clumsy because the things that you expect to come aren't going to come. And it's going to actually come in rather mischievous ways, not in bad mischievous ways, but just as in you kind of think kind of like a fairy kind of danced upon where you are. It's kind of like little tricks just start to happen that might be amusing to somebody else, but most definitely is going to get to be a bit frustrating. It can get to be a bit frustrating if you're not warned not to be doing anything really, really big at this time. So just know that, and I see it more, it's not going to be as intense, like Taurus has it really intense, but for you, you Cancer, it is going to be more mischievous, but it is going to be highly impactful on you. And the conclusions that are within reach really come from emotional conclusions, emotional revelations, a sense of you moving forward, because this moon is also the perfect time to plant the seed that you desire to grow for this year. And this is a moon all about nurturing, all about love, really connected with the sacred feminine, the time within the womb. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you're in winter months, and that really is a time excuse me, a time within the womb. If you are in the Southern Hemisphere, you are in the summer months. That's a time of, you know, masculinity, of growth. But it, I'm seeing this time, if you are in the Southern Hemisphere, even if you are in the Northern Hemisphere, of kind of being like the incubator that you put baby chicks in. Like it's so warm and cozy. And that's what you're needing to grow the seed of what you desire. There's this warmth and this coziness around your inner self. And so you might say, you know, why aren't things developing the way that I want? I feel this spark within me. And that's because it's the seed of what you truly desire, taking shape, growing, and coming to a conclusion. Not coming to a conclusion, but coming to you know a place where the roots start to kind of form and you start to break out of the shell. So you're going to feel as if the, there's a spark of of passion, but there is also this need for quiet, for serenity, for, again, that time within the womb to grow and to manifest into something bigger. And on January 24th, you move into the new moon. And the new moon is in Aquarius. It's crowning you. It's actually connected here with the Page of Cups, which is you in the Minor Arcana, learning and understanding. So this brings love into the situation. You're going to be all about love. You really are. The moon is going to call to love to you. The color for the full moon is rose, surrounding yourself with rose, that grounding, earthy, you know, power and awakening of consciousness that rose brings is going to be highly beneficial to you. The color of the new moon is, is coral, and this is connecting you with the sea. And that's what I'm seeing here. It's kind of like the rose connects you with the earth. The coral connects you with the sea, which is going to be actually a very powerful time for you because you are represented by the cups in the major arcana. You are a water sign. And so being represented and being connected by the sea through the color coral is going to be highly beneficial to you. And this says a new start is coming. There's going to be a new way that you look at things as an emotional being, as a being that comes from love, that moves you towards your truth and towards your power. But by embracing your heart, you cut through doubts and fears and you open up new possibilities. Now, your animals for this time, your spirit guide animals for January is the bear and the owl. So the bear here is take time out. You're going, it's, it's the brown bear and you're going to need to take time out. You're going to need to take a time out for you. And then this moves you to the owl spirit, which as you take time out, you see things more clearly. There's going to be a sense because you're going to want to give, you're going to want to grow, you're going to want to develop so much and you're going to want to give to so many different people that if you don't take time out for you, Cancer, you are going to find that you feel drained that you feel overwhelmed, and that there's a real sense of feeling out of place, of out of the, the realm of what you wanted to develop. And when you get pulled out of the realm of what you wanted to develop, your sight isn't going to be as clear. You're going, not physically, but it's kind of like when you envision things, you're going to sit there and be like, oh, it's so foggy. You know, why can't I see it correctly? I, I had this in my mind before. And this is by taking that time out, not being pulled in half a million dip, million different directions. Also, this move promotes healthy boundaries, the need for healthy boundaries. By embracing those healthy boundaries, you're going to be able to see things clearly. And in February, oh goodness, of course, that just fell on the floor. So in February, you you are going, you go into the otter spirit and it says you are never alone. 
You are never alone as you move forward. There is always the divine power coming around you. And I think I'm just going to leave that card there. Actually, no, I can't. I just can't do that. So let me just grab that off the floor. I do apologize for the bit of a pause. All right. You get to hear my squeaky floor and my squeaky chair. All right. Fantastic. Okay, so let's dive in now. At your heart, your head and your crown are all major arcana cards. So this, again, is a profoundly impactful moon for you. And at your heart, with the tower, you have things changing. The tower is not a bad card. I know everybody sits there and they see the tower and they go, oh my gosh, you know, Dane, the tower is terrible. It's everything falling apart and my life has been falling apart. No, this is divinity pushing you out of your comfort zone. And I know for so many people, 2019 was a really challenging month. It was an end of a cycle, but it was a 10 of swords month. This, not month, a 10 of swords year. It's, you know, the darkness before the dawn. This is the dawn that's coming in. And you're going to find cancer that divinity through this full moon is pushing you out of your comfort zone comfort zone, pushing you out of where you really feel like, okay, this is where I want to stand. This is what I feel comfortable with. And spirit's going to be pushing you a bit further, a bit towards something more. And the seven of swords is very interesting because if you see here, the man is sneaking away from the wolves that are around the fire and he's leaving something behind. He's like, you know what? That is too much to bring with me. It's too dangerous to go after that. I'd rather not get into the fight of the wolves. And it's that's the hunger that this moon is going to bring up because this is the wolf moon. So the wolf imagery, <clears throat> excuse me, the wolf imagery in this card is highly powerful. And I love that you end with the king of swords who has a wolf right before his feet. So here there is a sense of, you know, having something come up from this moon. This moon is bringing things up and forgotten memories definitely come to the surface. Forgotten you know, desires from past lives, from ancestral ties are also going to be coming up and you're going to be looking at things in a new way. And there's something here that you have to leave behind in order to move forward. And you might not feel at first comfortable. You might sit there and say, but this is such a big part of my identity. And it's not something positive. It's something negative. It's like, oh, I define myself by this failure, or I've defined myself as the quirky one, the one that nobody really sees and, and, and things like that. They're not, it's not something it's not something good. And by this full moon making you hungry to move forward, it's going to make you also hungry for a new sense of definition. You are going to be redefining yourself in, in this full moon of January 2020 to from January 10th to February 9th. And as you are redefining yourself, you're going to find that you have so much more knowledge and understanding than you ever did before. And trying to carry with you what really no longer fits. It's going to lead to a fight. It's going to lead to a fight that you just don't want to have. It can be within yourself where you sit there and you think, oh my gosh, you know, am I moving forward the right way? Do I know what I'm doing? And a whole bunch of doubt, a whole bunch of fear, a whole bunch of apprehensions. And as you are pushed out of your comfort zone and here, it can even feel like you're trying to escape and you're being held at at spear point, it's kind of like spirit is like, no, you cannot m hide away from the change that divinity is bringing. And it's going to be the sacred feminine. Oh, that's why. Okay. So the sacred feminine is a forgotten voice, a voice that people are starting to come back to and to pull power from. And that's what it's going to be, the forgotten power of the self. And by trying to avoid the fall that comes, not the fall as in you have to fail, but the fall as in being pushed out of your comfort zone, you know, seeing things differently. You're going, spirit is saying, no, you can't do that. Spirit is saying you have to experience this. And yes, you might fall, you might skin your knees, you might sit there and be like a little kid learning how to walk and you fall and you tumble, but you get back up. And that's the part of your power here because love is crowning you with the star card. All right. The star card represents an Aquarius energy. That's where the f the new moon is, and this is a time frame of January twentieth to February. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm just going to take actually a sip of water. All right. Much better. Thank you. And so, with the star, you are seeing that this time frame also falls right in the time frame 
of for most of the time frame of this of this reading it's January 20th to February 18th so the last half is going to be very powerful and it's also right around the new moon new moon the new moon is on January 24th and so here as you step into your power as you step into your grace you're going to again see the balance and oh that's so funny because you have the roses right here and here you don't have coral but you have the water lilies the lotus flowers and he is watering the the earth because the earth needs water to survive and he's also adding water to the pond because or she I don't know uh, because there is a need to keep the water flowing within the pond and you're going to see that both the water of the soul and the water of practicality are going to be so important to you during this time you are crowned here by love by understanding by a sense of peace this is the star of Venus that is moving you forward if you have okay if you have your Venus in Aquarius or there's love surrounding somebody in Aquarius spirit is saying that your relationship with this person is going to be or with the relationship with your Venus with love is going to be amplified even if you don't cancer your relationship with love is amplified empowered and moving you towards your truth your bounty and what you desire from your life as you do so you are rising higher and as you do so you are going to see that you become a student of the water of love because here the water is being poured, here he is drinking from a cup, and you will find that others do not understand the power that you are possessing. They want to take it from you. They think, oh my gosh, you have a secret that I really need. And there is a sense here that this moon, which we can see right here, is really kind of crowning you, really bringing you greater power. And it does need to be shared, but it cannot be taken, all right? So it needs to be shared willingly, the sense of of love, the sense of empowerment, the sense of greater understanding, this root to grow in comfort, what you truly desire, the seed that is planted. And it's also a release from the past. You are going to find that by facing certain things during this time, the past does not have yeah, the greatest hold over you or the hold that it once did. And that's what we're seeing here. But what you leave behind in the fires is, again, as stated earlier, something from the past that is not beneficial and that cannot cannot be returned to. It's kind of like that is done and now it's time to move forward. What you have at your roots is the lover's card and the lover's card represents a Gemini time frame, May 21st to June 20th. This is also a sense of stepping into love, of having this connection of love leading you forward and it doesn't really need to be fully seen. If you see these both people are cloaked and happiness bliss and joy is crowning them so here as you move forward the love of what you truly want may be cloaked to others or may not be as visible as you had thought it was or as you know as definable because there's going to be a duality to you during this time there's a balance that comes in from the earth and from the water so there's a sense of practicality and there's a sense of spiritual understanding that is really guiding you and grounding you during this time so you will feel yourself pulled in two different directions but both are going to be profoundly of the heart to move you in the love that you want and in the bounty that you need and as you embrace this truth as you embrace this power you are going to see that a fire sign energy comes around you Aries Leo Sagittarius but this is also a emboldening and embracing of creativity that is around you that is moving you forward and as you are emboldened as you are embracing this I always see the queen of wands as the goddess Hecate Hecate in Greek mythology so the goddess of magic and there is a sense here of you embracing your internal magic and as I've always said I don't believe in magic as being able to conjure things I believe in magic as yeah as the knowing the God's head lives within you and being able to move forward in that power and in that truth. There is a passion around you. There is a power to you. And you are going to be more comfortable when it comes to getting things done or creativity, 
being behind the scenes. You don't really want to be the actor upon the stage. Now, there's also a sense here of having conquered a lot of doubts and a lot of fears during this time, really seeing your truth and walking in your truth. There is a sense here of not really needing to battle. The Seven of Wands in the Rider Waite Smith deck shows, you know, a person battling holding a wand, defending themselves from six others. Now, what's really interesting is that you have here, you being a student of what you desire with the Page of Cups. This leads to the Eight of Wands, which has the bird flying, and it has a connection to the star, to the Aquarius energy, to the new moon. Things start to change, so you might also very much see a change really happening around the, not only around this full moon when it first starts, but also around the new moon. This is a time of tremendous change, of tremendous growth, and it leads you to a place of empowerment. And instead of, you know, flying, okay, there is a sense of the bird now resting and saying, I see what it is that I want and I'm going after and I've obtained the truth of what I desire. And as you do so, the hanged man here, now the hanged man is here a man hanging from a tree, right, surrounded by runes, but there is also a sense here of seeing things differently than everybody else. And the reason why this hangman is seeing things bit differently than everybody else is because his eyes are covered and he's seeing inward, right? And there is no movement. There is no sense of escape from the way that you are seeing things. So this moon is going to bring to you a sense of seeing things very differently than you have before, but it's also going to be a very empowering time because you are using this energy and you are using this truth to guide you forward, to lead you forward and to say, okay, this is where I stand. This is what I want. This is what I need to do. And so here, the full moon pulls you inward. Yeah, it's going to be a time of meditation, self-reflection. You don't need to sit down and meditate all day if you do not want to or for a time during the day. You can go for a walk. You can just simply do something that you love that kind of takes your mind out of a certain space, out of the worry, it's not of a certain space, it's out of the space of worry, the space of apprehensions, and know that yes, you are seeing things very differently than everybody else, and do not let people tell you that this is wrong, because it's going to move you out of a past that has been holding you still, and it's going to move you into your passion and into the creativity that you want to develop. There, it can also be here that you're seeing things very differently than a fire sign Gemini energy, okay, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, or a Gemini, but there is a sense here that by embracing your duality and embracing your passion, your insight becomes so tremendously unique that it becomes very, very empowering. It becomes a place where it becomes a way that you kind of, you bounce off of it. It's kind of like this is your springboard. The unique insights that you are getting, the unique insights that you are obtaining makes your mind the king of of sorts. This is an air sign energy, a Gemini, a Libra, and Aquarius. We have the Gemini here. We have the Aquarius here. We just don't have the Libra. And this is very much saying here that this full moon, this moon that has made you hungry is guarding you, is guiding you, and is protecting you as you draw the sword that brings truth and brings enlightenment. It does also warn against being sharp-tongued. Every single air, air sign has to be warned against being sharp-tongued in the negative sense. Just like every single water sign has to be warned about, you know, kind of being pulled out by the undertow of their emotions, okay, and kind of getting swept up in things. So here, your mind is going to be what everybody focuses on. The mind, your words, your truth, and that's why being sharp-tongued is going to be so detrimental because people are going to be like, wow, that just came out of nowhere. I didn't even deserve that. What the heck is going on? It's going to throw people because you're coming from such a place of love and compassion that actually this King of Swords is defending you during this time. You might actually find that a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius is a great defender of yours or a great cornerstone, somebody that you kind of yeah, you, you rely on, you lean on during this time or somebody that you, you talk to in order to have things echoed back. It's kind of, actually, I see the story of Echo, okay, when they shout out and the words come back to them. That is going to be what the queen, not the queen, the king of swords does for you. It takes your words and it brings it back to you and it lets you see things more clearly. You have tremendous insight during this time that is very powerful for you. And this full moon, it guards you, it protects you, it moves you forward towards what you are hungry for, towards what you desire to create. And then things start to change 
rather quickly. You again have the star of Venus here. So you have here passion and creation moving you forward. And the the eight of wands is saying that things happen rather quickly. You're going to see changes happen rather quickly. And for a lot of you cancers, you're going to need to step back, kind of take it all in and then be like, oh, okay, I see. I see what I am learning from this situation. I see how I am growing. And I also see what others desire of me at this time where they're kind of reaching for my cup of bounty, reaching for my truth. And as you see this, you're going to be moving further away from who you once were. And there's this beautiful kind of trans transformation that's coming into the power of what you love that guides you. Now let's see, we're going to do half of this in the Moonology cards and the other half in the Queen of the Moon cards. So. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. Cancer, January. How will cancer be affected by January 2020 full moon? How will cancer be affected by January 2020's full moon? How will cancer be affected by January 2020 full moon? Show me clearly. Show me clearly, 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 show me clearly. Fantastic. And I'm just going to lay these out quietly. And then let's see what your Queen of the Moon cards have to say. How will cancer be affected by the January full moon? How will cancer be affected by the January 2020 full moon? How will cancer be affected by the January 2020 full moon? How will cancer be affected by the January 2020 full moon? Show me clearly, 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 show me clearly. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right. I love it. I do. It's, it's very serious here, the way that you are affected, the way the moon is speaking to you. There's a sense of, of the moon having a very serious face on her at this time. Luna's really saying to you that, you know, this is a powerful moon for you and she wants you to take it. And I'm, of course, referring to the moon now in the aspect of the divine feminine. She wants you to take this moon to be very serious because she's saying that a part of your voice and a part of her has been denied for so long. And she wants you to move forward in the truth that is you and in the power that is you. So here, at the center of everything, we have the waxing crescent moon, which says, have faith in your dreams, because that is something here where spirit is really pulling you out of your comfort zone to say, have faith in your dreams, have faith in what it is that you've wanted to, to do, no, what you've wanted to create, like that's it, you're going to be stumbling over things, yeah, you're going to be stumbling over things at times, because you're going to sit there <clears throat> and very much feel like, oh my gosh, can I do this? Can I move forward in this power? Can I move forward in this truth? And Luna is saying, yes, you can. You can move forward. And being pushed out of your comfort zone is bringing you to, to have to have faith in the greater purpose and in the greater purpose of your dreams, of what it is that you're desiring. For a lot of you cancers, you're actually going to have a dream that, I don't want to say disturbing in like, oh my gosh, it was so like scary or gross or anything like that. But a dream that shakes you to your core, that really makes you look at things and realize that you were affected by something a lot more than you had thought you were. And that's going to be, for a lot of you cancers, the springboard to, to creating and to going after what it is that you want to say, okay, that time in my life or that situation does, doesn't have the power over me that it once did because you hear... I do apologize, my throat it just has a catch in it. You are setting up boundaries. You are setting up the boundaries of from the past to the present and from the the attack of things. It's kind of like it's like a trigger. It's like if you go after what 
divinity is saying you no longer need or that is no longer a part of you, this past that doesn't help you grow, doesn't help that seed that you are planting within your consciousness, your subconsciousness, within yourself, within your, your glory that you are incubating, that you are moving forward, that is now embracing this time of contemplation, contemplation of understanding. You are going to be attacked by, by the wolves, by a, fero a ferocity of memories that you really do not want. And the boundaries that you are setting up, the boundaries are moving you forward to a grace and a peace that has been so sought after. And you are crowned here by the new moon in Taurus. The new moon in Taurus is saying possibilities, no, prosperity lies ahead. And it lies between the earthly plane and the spiritual plane. It lies with you following your gut of love and of joy and of understanding. And it really does move you forward to a greater truth and to a greater peace. Peace. You're going to be rather bullheaded about things, which people might find rather surprising about you, Cancer, during this time. It's kind of like, no, this is what I want. This is, especially when it comes to love. You're going to be like, do not tell me how to love. Do not tell me where my heart should lie. This is something that is very powerful for you. You are really embracing your emotional truth because I firmly believe that we are emotional beings and by embracing our hearts and knowing our hearts we it affects our mind because our emotions affect the way we think affect the way we act and here you are moving forward in such a powerful truth that embraces the the rose energy that is around you, that grounding energy, that sense of beauty with thorns, the sense that beauty comes, but also at times it can be painful, it can be hurtful. And as you move forward, there's going to be this greater wisdom that comes to you, that enlightens you, that moves you in your grace. And then we have here discernment. As you learn and as you understand, the power of this moon can blow your mind at times. Really, it's going to be like awing. You're going to sit there and think, oh my gosh, you know, I never saw it this way. I never thought of this it this way. And you hold the power of the sun of solar in at your heart, at your soul. And as Luna moves you forward, the sun, the solar grace that is that is driving you, the passion, the creativity that we as human beings thrive off of is going to grow exponentially, exponentially during this time. And you are a student of the bounty that is around you. And others might sit there and say, you know, share with me, show me what it is that you have learned. But there is a sense here of gaining stability, gaining understanding. And as you gain your footing, you see a greater grace around you than you had before. But you're drinking of the cup of Luna's knowledge. And that really moves you forward to your roots of the full moon in Aquarius. So you're crowned here with Aquarius in the tarot. You're rooted here with Aquarius in Luna. And so as you open your heart, <coughs> excuse me, to love, to joy, to understanding, as you're, as you tie yourself to a future, as the sun and the moon, you know, the passion and the creativity come together, the, the passion and also the gentleness come together the cooling light and the blazing heat come together. It says, show the world the real you, right? You are being told to, to step into your light, to step into your truth. Do not be afraid to show the world the true you because the true you is what you are taking power of here and what you are moving forward in, in love, in grace, in understanding. And this moves you to the darkness. And the darkness is where a lot of revelations are going to be held. So during this lunar eclipse, the darkness is going to bring enlightenment to you. And as you embrace the lunar eclipse, the darkness is going to stay with you and be where you are born from how you thrive this time in the womb. So darkness is what you're embracing and you have the rabbit right here. And in Celtic tradition, in Celtic mythology, the rabbit represents magic. It was a sign of actually witches. Witches would have, if they were highly, you know, really revered, they would have, or Druidas, they would have rabbits embroidered on their, on their clothing or on a, etched on a piece of jewelry. And here you have Haket, the goddess of magic in Greek mythology, right? That's how I see the queen of wands. So there is a true sense of you coming into the magic of what it is that you want. And again, the passion of the wands, the creativity, the fire, and the coolness of the moon and the waters where you reside in your heart's truth is what's moving you forward and what's gracing you. 
and you're going to find that balance, that sense of the passion needing you to move forward. And you're like, oh my gosh, I just have to jump in and then pulling you back. It's going to be like the tides. And yeah, that is one of the things that you are going to see that as the phases of the moon change, you are going to find that you are pulled by them. You have knowledge coming to you very forthrightly during this time. And then you move more into a place as the moon starts to hide her face. Okay, kind of think of it as a fan coming over as she starts to hide her face. There is deeper secrets that are revealed. There are things that are whispered to you. So there are truths that are going to come that come very softly at first and then build their momentum as the, then the moon starts to grow. We move then into the full moon in Sagittarius. It says, look at the bigger picture. As you stand in your power, as you see your truth, as you claim the power of what you are creating and where you are going, see the bigger picture of what you want and what you need. Because for some, the sense of victory is going to be kind of short-lived and you're going to sit there and then go, oh my gosh, there's so much more than I need to do. There's so much more that I need to build in order for myself to move forward. And yes, it, there is, but do not let this become so terribly overwhelming that you, you feel almost stunted. You feel as if, oh my gosh, I can't possibly move forward. And it becomes, again, a battle. There is a sense of a, of a sense of pride coming over you. And if you walk in that pride, it's not being arrogant. It's walking in the pride of self. And this is why I was created. And this is the, the power of my heart's truth. And as you do so, you look at the bigger picture and you see that self-love is going to be so tremendously empowering. And if you look here, her lips are black. And so I see that as speaking with the truth of the, of the eclipse moving you forward. And the silver of the moon guides you. And at times, self-love is going to be what you wrap yourself in and are bound by a sense of loving yourself and seeing the bigger picture of what you desire and seeing the truth of your heart as you move forward. This leads you to understanding boundaries because you do not see things the way everybody else does. And that is such a profound gift for you that is embraced through the darkness, through the phases of the moon and through the shadows that come and are realized. You then have the full moon in Scorpio, which says it is time to release negativity and you are being guarded as you release the negativity, as you cut through doubts and fears. And this full moon, this wolf's moon is guarding you every step of the way. So you might sit there and think, oh my gosh, what do you mean it's guarding me? There have been things that I'm confronting or things that I'm thinking about that I haven't in the longest time. And it can, it can actually make you feel rather uncomfortable at times here cancer, but it's also going to be a sense of you cutting away the negativity of you saying, this is no longer my story. This is no longer part of my truth. I am now writing new chapters. I am now embracing new understanding. And as you do so, you, you step into a power that is bountifully and beautifully your own. And you speak with such conviction. This is a time of your words. This is a time of really paying attention because you are the king. You are the actor upon the stage, okay? The queen of wands that's here is the director behind the scenes. Kings I see as actors upon the stage, not as male or female. Queens I see as directors. Your passion, your creativity, much more behind the scenes, much more taking place in the darkness of your soul. And I don't mean that in like the negativity of your soul. I mean it in the quiet recesses of your bounty. You cannot have light without darkness because you you wouldn't know what light was and you wouldn't know what darkness is. The darkness is going to be very soothing for you. It's going to be a place, again, of the womb, of growing, of contemplating, of understanding and of building. And with this time of release of negativity, you now start to speak your truth. And there is a bit of a, you know what, no more, no more of this nonsense, no more of this hardship, no more of this am I going to be embracing because now your mind is embracing your heart's truth and your heart is walking in a sense of self-love in a sense of growing something so much greater this then leads you to creation everything starts to change and you start to create what you have longed for you start to create what has been a part of your soul for so long and the change that is coming to you. You step back for a moment and you need to take it in. And then that change leads you forward. It has you jump, has you kind of skip ahead in your, your development as a spiritual being to where it is that your heart wants to be and what it is that your heart wants to be as you move forward and as you are grace. This is a time of great creation and great power for you. It all has to come 
from a place of love because that is where your heart's truth lies the most. It leads you to discernment. It leads you to being picky about things, not saying, oh, come one, come all. It leads you to saying, you know what? No, I can only do so much and there's only so much of my power. So I'm going to step back as I embrace my heart. And yes, people may very well be reaching towards you, Cancer, but you have to drink of the cup first. You have to fill yourself first with the beauty, the love, the wisdom of this moon, and then you can share it with others. There are boundaries that grow beautiful, beautiful roses and of of love, but it's a purity. There's a sense of there's a sense of serenity to it, and this also is a sense of wisdom to you as you move forward. So let's see what your spirit guide animal card has to say. How will cancer be affected by the January 2020 full moon? How will cancer be affected by the January 2020 full moon? Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. Fantastic. It's the dove. It's peace. The dove spirit says, be peace. Be that peace you want to see in the world. Be that kindness. Be that compassion. Be that understanding. But first and foremost, be it to yourself. At the subconscious level, your subconscious your, your spirit guide animal cards are saying the badger spirit, which says be fearless and bold, which you might think is complete contrast with peace, but it is actually what you need to have peace come into your life and into this world. It's being bold. It's being fearless. It's being this, this sense of power of self, and it's knowing your worth. Then your subconscious queen of the moon is purity. There's a sense a purity of understanding that leads you forward. There's a sense of things kind of being whitewashed. You know how you paint a wall all white? You know, if you have a very deep color over under it, I believe that's how it goes. And then you are going to have things cleared, things clean, things anew. I, it's a blank canvas for which to work off of. And it comes with the purity of soul and self. The, the moonology cards say here with the waxing moon there is the energy is gaining momentum so the energy of what you desire of your boldness of your ferocity of spirit is gaining momentum but it is rooted in the purity of your heart and of your soul if you lose the purity of intention if you lose the the peace that you are coming off of or building from or the love that you're building from you're going to feel as if everything is tipping everything is kind of like an earthquake during this time and your subconscious message for this whole entire reading yes it is the wheel of fortune so exactly what I was saying what spirit was saying before if you do not come from this place of purity everything will change and it will change in a way that feels overwhelming to you in a way that feels like oh my gosh can I actually do this because the wheel of fortune is saying that subconsciously you know that your life is doing a 180 that things are shifting that you're entering into a new season of soul and of self and of power and of understanding and at times you feel like you're on a roller coaster ride you have your highs and you'll have these beautiful highs but you'll also have these lows where it's kind of like the roller coaster ride during this full moon during this time from the 10th of January to the 9th of February and as you embrace your truth and your power, you're going to see that you stand on much sturdier ground because you're able to, it's kind of like you're, you're that ship, right? You're the person on a ship. And when you first get on the ship, when it rocks and as it moves on the water, you have to kind of gain your footing and it's really hard to move with the rocking and the, yeah, the rocking of the ship, the rocking and the rolling of the ship. But as you gain your sea legs, which is what you're all about, Cancer, because you come from the heart and you are a water sign, you're gaining your sea legs and you're seeing that you can, you can walk upon the deck without, without having your course veered. You can walk a very straight line as you go through these changes, as you weather the changes that life is bringing you. And you do so with such peace and such dignity that people are drawn to you. All right, Cancer, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you, and I love you all. Bye.